Hey, Marcus Conti reporting. A little timestamp. Hey, Google, what's today's time and date? It is 8.22 a.m., the 29th of January, 2019. Just for the record, still alive. So uh, yesterday in the news, you saw John Bolton, the walrus. I am the walrus. Cuckoo, cuckoo. I had a fucking mustache. He looks like a, he does look like a walrus, doesn't he? Uh, so he's got a book in his hand, right? See that little pad in his hand? Did he do something sneaky here, right? Did he reveal top secret information about the United States government? Did you, John? Did you? Are you talking to the to the to the other side? Are you signaling with your pad? What does the pad say, right? I'll tell you what it says. Check this shit out, oh, man. You can't make this shit up. Look at this, man. You see the shit? You blow it up. What does it say? 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 5,000 troops to Colombia. Pow! Busted! Right? I don't know what the line above it says. But that line right there. 5,000 troops to Colombia. While he's, he's on the press box talking about, talking about uh, Venezuela. Busted, right? So I'm going to play some, uh, I'm going to play the full clip because that wasn't the, uh, the biggest information. Um, we already knew that they would probably commit troops because that's what the United States does. That's their, you know, that's their, uh, that's their foreign policy these days, right? That's that's how we operate, right? We go in, and we we uh, we we overthrow countries. So, just let me read this, and I'm going to play a video. I'll play uh, the press conference of Bolton and uh, Steve Mnuchin uh, talking about the sanctions in Venezuela. So it's full on squeeze right now. It's a full court press. The U.S. is lining up along Colombian border, it now seems, right? And uh, with military might, 5,000 troops. What's the cost of that? <laughs> how, many, how many millions and billions is the military-industrial complex going to spend on this one, right? That's what's going on. That's what's going on in your country. This is all in the name of saving the people of Venezuela, where there's no evidence whatsoever that there is a humanitarian crisis. But there is evidence to suggest that Russia, China, and the United States, the, the troi troika of tyranny, <laughs> that's the real troika of tyranny, by the way, not, not Venezuela, Nicaragua, and Cuba. The real troika of tyranny is the United States, China, and Russia all converging on the little nation of Venezuela to get a little piece of the pie, get that oil money. So, uh, John, John, I'm just going to read from from mainstream media for a second. John Bolton's notes may may have revealed possible military plans for Venezuela. That's not a mistake, right? Do you think a guy? Do you think that the national security, <laughs> the guy who's responsible for national security, would come out with a with a a, a top secret military? Uh, instruction written on a pad by accident. That's that's just not what they're doing, right? They're telling you, but they're not telling you. They're telling you what they're going to do. Right? National Security Advisor John Bolton, you just saw him, uh, and we're going to hear in his own words, was spotted on Monday holding the pad, right? And and according to mainstream media, everybody's in agreement. It says five thousand troops to Colombia, scrolled across the top. Bolton's cryptic message was revealed while he was announcing sanctions on Colombia's South American neighbor, Venezuela. There you go. The penalties uh, raised the the penalties raised the possibility of a military intervention in Venezuela. President uh, Nicolas Maduro did not concede power in the oil-rich company. They always got to throw that in there. It's gold-rich too. When asked for comments on the troop note, quote, troop note, the White House uh, would only uh, reiterate Bolton's message during the press conference that the president has said all options, quote, all options are on the table. An administration uh, confirmed to Fox, uh, the administration confirmed to Fox News that the scribble remarks were related to the situation in Venezuela. It was, it wasn't clear, however, if Bolton intended the message to be viewed by the public. Well, it, it is. I think that's. I think it's rather obvious. It's safe to say that they had full intention. So here's the lovely Sarah Huckabee Sanders is going to introduce. Regime of Nicolas Maduro. 
Let's just check this out. Right and allow for free, fair, and credible elections in accordance with democratic principles. To speak more about U.S. policy towards Venezuela and to take your questions, I'd like to welcome to the podium National Security Advisor, Ambassador John Bolton, Secretary of the Treasury, Stephen Mnuchin, and Director of the National Economic Council, Larry Kudlow. And after that, I'll be up to take other questions of the day. Thanks, Dustin. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Thank you very much, uh, Sarah. Uh, as you know, on January the 23rd, President Trump officially recognized the president of the Venezuelan National Assembly, Juan Guaido, as the interim president of Venezuela. Venezuela's National Assembly uh, invoked Article 233 of the country's constitution to declare Nicolas Maduro illegitimate. This action was a statement that the people of Venezuela have had enough of oppression, corruption, and economic hardship. Since then, 21 other governments in the region and across the world have joined the United States in recognizing Guaido as Venezuela's interim president. Uh, today, and I'll turn the uh, podium over to Steven Mnuchin for this purpose, we're going to announce sanctions against Petroleus de Venezuela, Sociedad Anima, or PETAVESA, as it's known by its Spanish acronym, the state-owned oil monopoly. Uh, we have continued to expose the corruption of Maduro and his cronies, and today's action ensures they can no longer loot the assets of the Venezuelan people. Uh, we expect, and Secretary Mnuchin will go into this in more detail, that today's measure uh, totals $7 billion in assets blocked today, plus over $11 billion in lost export proceeds over the next year. We also today call on the Venezuelan military and security forces to accept the peaceful, democratic, and constitutional transfer of power. And to a certain extent, this has already begun. We have seen uh, Venezuelan official and military personnel heeding this call. The Venezuelan defense attache uh, here in Washington uh, recognized President Guaido a few days ago. And just within the past hours, uh, the first consul of Venezuela's consulate in Miami, Scarlett Salazar, uh, has also declared for interim President Guaido. I call on all responsible nations to recognize interim president Guaido immediately. Maduro has made clear he will not recognize Guaido or call for new elections. Now is the time to stand for democracy and prosperity in Venezuela. I reiterate that the United States will hold Venezuelan security forces responsible for the safety of all U.S. diplomatic personnel, the National Assembly, and President Guaido. Any violence against these groups would signify a grave assault on the rule of law and will be met with a significant response. Uh, now let me give the floor to Stephen Mnuchin, who will describe the sanctions that we're imposing. Thank you. Today, Treasury took action against Venezuela's state-owned oil company, PDVSA, to help prevent the further diversion of Venezuela's assets by former President Maduro. The United States is holding accountable those responsible for Venezuela's tragic decline. We will continue to use all of our diplomatic and economic tools to support interim President Guaido, the National Assembly, and the Venezuelan people's efforts to restore their democracy. PDVSA has long been a vehicle for embezzlement, for corruption, for Venezuelan officials and businessmen. Today's designation of PDVSA will help prevent further diversion of Venezuela's assets by Maduro and will preserve these assets for the people of Venezuela where they belong. The path to sanctions relief for PDVSA is through the expeditious transfer of control to the interim president or a subsequent democratically elected government who is committed to taking concrete and meaningful actions to combat corruption. Today's actions against PDVSO follows my determination that persons operating in the Venezuelan oil sector may now be subject to sanctions. Today, OFAC also issued a number of general licenses that authorize certain transactions and activities with PDVSA for limited periods of time to minimize any immediate disruptions and support of ongoing humanitarian efforts. 
Citgo assets in the United States will be able to continue to operate, provided that any funds that would otherwise go to PDVSA instead will go into a blocked account in the United States. Refineries in the United States have already been taking steps to reduce their reliance on imports from Venezuela. Those imports have fallen substantially in recent months. We have also issued general licenses to ensure that certain European and Caribbean countries can make an orderly transition. We continue to call on all of our allies and partners to join the United States in recognizing interim President Guaido and blocking Maduro from being able to access pay to visa funds. Thank you with that, and I'd be happy to answer some questions. So uh, let me break that down for you. It's pretty crazy what you're hearing, right? So you heard, I, I know that was, a long, that was a long clip, but it's important to listen to what they're saying. That's the Goldman Sachs guy, Steve Mnuchin, basically telling you exactly in, in explicit detail how they're going to squeeze the Venezuelan people. Right? They're creating the problem, don't you see? He's a lot, they, they're talking about blocking the assets from Venezuela is 95%, 95% dependent on oil, right? The sales of oil through through that the company that they just named, right? And what, what the what and they sell it into the US market, right? And what the U.S. has done with the Secretary of the Treasury is block the assets, right, that the, the revenue generated from that oil so that, it, so that Maduro, the president of the country, doesn't have access to it to feed the people because to, to, they're saying he's corrupt. He's, uh, so it's an illegal action, right? They're, 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 it's, it's like... It's like um, they're, they're defaulting, the U.S. is defaulting on the credit, right? They're not even that. It's like a guy, you know what it's like? It's like you, you own a store, right? And, and um, you sell or you, you're, you sell stuff to a store, right? Maybe you, sell, you make bread and you sell your bread to a store. And then the store one day says, no, 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 you, we, don't like your, we don't like your face. You're, you're guilty of a face crime and now we're not going to pay you. We're going to hold all the money. You can keep selling us shit if you want. But we're going to keep that money and we're going to give it to the guy that we think is 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 uh, better, right? The, the neoliberal, the, the Juan Guardo, the CIA plant. That's what's going on. See, that's the thing that people, you, you miss, right? So they're using military might. They're using extreme sanctions, choking the country until it falls, uh, that's humanitarian. That's a humanitarian effort. And what's the what was the crime? The crime was that allegedly Maduro was was elected in an election that they that the United States considered shady, right? And and all our elections are shady. All our elections are fake. So. So the so the message there is is clear that, that there is uh there is U U.S. military might on the table. There's there's Bolton and Mnuchin lying their asses off saying that that it's all about the Venezuelan people, but it's not. It's about the it's about the it's about position. It's about resources under their feet. It's about physical uh, uh, position as well in terms of because if Russia and China get a strong arm. China already has some significant uh, investments in Venezuela, and so does Russia. Right? So if any of those countries get a leading role in, in Venezuela's economy, in other words, if they debt them, whoever debts Venezuela the most is going to have a controlling interest, and the United States is losing that race right now. And you'll have another Bay of Pigs, right? Uh, Google, hey Google, what is the Bay of Pigs? According to Wikipedia, the Bay of Pigs invasion was a failed military invasion of Cuba undertaken by the Central Intelligence Agency-sponsored paramilitary group Brigade 2506 on the 17th of April, 1961. And, hey Google, where was the Bay of Pigs? According to Wikipedia, the Bay of Pigs is an inlet of the Gulf of Cazones located on the southern coast of Cuba. Right. So that was, that was the, hey Google, what is the uh, Cuban Missile Crisis? 
According to Wikipedia, the Cuban Missile Crisis, also known as the October Crisis of 1962, the Caribbean Crisis, or the Missile Scare, was a 13-day confrontation between the United States and the Soviet Union initiated by American ballistic missile deployment in Italy and Turkey with consequent Soviet ballistic missile deployment in Cuba. Okay, so there's your answer. That's the reason. That's one of the reasons. Thank you, Google. That's one of the reasons why the United States is desperate to get a footing in Venezuela, because if Russia and China beats them to it, you could have another Cuban Missile Crisis, where the the Bay of Pigs, where, where in John Kennedy's John F. Kennedy's own words, that we were looking down the barrel of a barrel of a gun with uh, with uh, Khrushchev and and uh, fucking right, whoever the, whoever the the Soviet guy was, right, and and that's that's the shit right there, right. Now is that a real scare? Is that reason to overthrow a smaller nation like Venezuela? I do not think so. I think there are other ways to be diplomatic rather than th threat. See, this is the might makes right, but you see how other countries will come in and they're playing the same game. They're going to push you out of the way. So Marcus Conti reporting.